Good evening, everyone. We're going to get started in just a couple minutes. Just going to let people filter in from the waiting room. All right, I believe we can go ahead and get started. Uh, good evening, my name is Katie Zazera. I am the Deputy Director of Capital Coordination here at the T, and I'm joined by Sharon Cranston, a Project Manager in our MBTA Capital Delivery Group. And we're here to update you on the Hingham Ferry Docks Improvement Project. Just a quick housekeeping note, this meeting is being recorded. And by remaining on this webinar, you are acknowledging that you are comfortable with being recorded as a part of this. So just uh, wanted to make a note of that. If you'd like to use closed captioning, um, you can use the button at the bottom of your screen. It's right next to, um, it's, it's toward the right and you can click and show closed captioning. You can also adjust the caption size by clicking the upward arrow next to start and stop video. Click video settings, then accessibility and move the slider to adjust the caption slide size, excuse me. All MBTA activities, including public meetings, are free of discrimination. The MBTA complies with all federal and state civil rights requirements, preventing discrimination on the basis of race, color, national origin, limited English proficiency, and additional protected characteristics. We welcome the diversity from across our entire service area. If you have any questions or concerns, please visit www.mbta.com slash title VI to reach the Office of Diversity and Civil Rights. If you're having technical issues, we do have, um, we do have a technical assistant helping us out tonight. So feel free to use the chat function and our technical assistant will help you troubleshoot the problem. Following our presentation tonight, we will have a question and answer period. You'll be able to either type a comment or raise your hand to issue a, a verbal comment. If you are calling in on the hand, you can, if you are calling in, you can use star nine to dial and raise your hand. I will call on your name or telephone number and let you know when you are being unmuted. I'll review this again once we get through the presentation. So here's a summary of what we'll be covering tonight. We're gonna to do a quick overview of the project and look at the existing conditions, uh, sh show the proposed improvements and show what has changed since we last came out here with the design, take a look at the anticipated schedule and make sure you have our contact information. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Sharon Cranston, project manager. Good evening and thank you for coming this evening. The Hingham Ferry Dock improvements has a total budget of about $25 million. This project is fully funded and will be going ahead with construction. Our status is we have completed our 100% design milestone. <clears throat> we, the project benefits is we're going to create a new fully accessible ferry dock. We will replace and extend the existing connecting walkways and we will replace and extend the canopies. We are going to increase the number of ferry slips and the operational flexibility this is not a change to the uh, ferry operations at the dock. It just allows us to better serve the existing ferry service. Next slide, please. The existing ferry dock has a wooden walkway that is covered um, that is uh, starting to deteriorate. So we will fully replace this with uh, new and more resilient materials. Next slide, please. Our existing ferry dock also requires us to raft our boats on occasion. Um, that's when you have two boats side by side because there aren't enough berths. This creates an accessibility challenge. 
because when you have rafted on uh, outside a boat, then somebody needs to cross over that entire boat before getting to the dock. So our new configuration will eliminate this accessibility challenge. Our ex existing dock also has a very steep gangway at low tide. One that we find that all of our riders uh, find our, is a bit challenging um, at low tide to come up. So this project will solve that accessibility challenge by having an ADA compliant ramp. Next slide, please. Our proposed layout is to move the entire dock outbound, uh, outboard from the existing dock. Because of the orientation of the navigational channel, the dock will need to be rotated in the new uh, position so that way it is parallel to the navigational channel and does not extend into it. Uh, the location of the dock is governed by the length of the gangway in order to achieve that ADA compliant slope at low tide. Uh, there will also be pile, a pile supported walkway. There will be two concrete piers that are pile supported and then aluminum walkways that uh, span between them. Those walkways will be covered with canopies. Next slide, please. The new dock will be made of three steel barges um, and will create four berths, three side berths and one bow loading berth. These berths will allow us the operational flexibility uh, to service all the boats that uh, in our fleet that serve the uh, Hingham line. The uh, barges will be moored to mooring piles that will go into the seafloor uh, to keep the barges in place. Next slide, please. For the proposed improvements, we will be having an aluminum gangway, which has a non-slip uh, deck. Uh, that will be a much nicer walking experience for all of our riders. There, it's going to be a 120 foot long gangway in order to achieve that ADA compliant slope. It will be ADA accessible and we are going to have enhanced wind protection on the sides of our walkways and gangway. Next slide, please. We have not had many substantial changes from our 75% design that we brought to you. Um, what we have been doing is advancing our environmental permitting. Because this uh, project takes place in the water, there is extensive environmental permitting that we have done. We have increased the wayfinding uh, signage that is part of this project. So that way, uh, unfamiliar users to the facility will be better able to navigate their way uh, around the site. We've been refining our structural details and connections, and we've been coordinating with local utilities. Next slide, please. For our anticipated schedule, we are continuing with our environmental permitting. Uh, right now we are in comment period for our chapter 91 application with DEP. And we are also ongoing uh, with our permitting with the Army Corps of Engineer. Uh, we have reached our 100% design milestone, uh, which is why we are coming to you to show, us, uh, show you what we have developed. We anticipate advertising the construction contract in late 2024. The advertisement date will be dictated uh, by the environmental permitting process. And we hope to begin construction in early 2025. We do have a time of year restriction for in-water silt producing work. Uh, that can only occur between November 15th and February 15th. So we hope to start construction very early in January of 2025 so that we can get all of our dredging work done before that window closes for the year. Uh, we do anticipate that our construction will be discontinuous. Uh, because, uh, because of that, we will be sure to come to you with communication throughout our construction process whenever we anticipate a uptick of uh, construction activity on site. For the construction phasing, phase one is going, we are going to be doing most of the site work that you will see. We will be installing the new dock, building the new walkways and installing our backup generator in the parking lot. In phase two, we will be demolishing the old dock. Phase three is rebuilding the pedestrian pathway to reroute um, so that way they connect to the new dock. And phase four will be close out. That's the small, uh, what we call punch list items um, that we identify 
that we want to make sure are buttoned up and finished before the contractor fully leaves site. We anticipate that construction will take between 18 and 24 months. That uh, time of year restriction I mentioned will have a large impact on our construction schedule because if we are not able to complete um, our targeted activities in uh, that window in one year, those activities will be delayed until the following November. Next slide, please. So for our public outreach, we intend uh, to have vignettes, which are slideshows with a voiceover that we'll post on our website to uh, provide construction updates. We'll have open houses and pop-ups at the Hingham Intermodal Facility uh, before any uptick in construction activity. Um, and then we have a project email address and a project website, which are always active. Thank you very much for uh, coming to our session today. And I'm gonna pass it back over to Katie uh, Zazera to uh, lead the question and answer portion. Thank you, Sharon. So as I mentioned, we are gonna begin the Q&A portion of tonight's meeting. If you are on the phone, please dial star nine and it will raise your hand. I'll call out the last four digits of your phone number. For those of you just tuning in via Zoom, you can use the raise hand function on the lower right. Again, I will call your name and let you know when you're being unmuted to make your verbal con uh, comment. If you would prefer to have a written comment, you can use the Q&A button, which is to the left side of your bar, and type in a comment that I will read aloud, um, and we will respond where we can. Uh, before, um, before we take in any new comments, I did want to acknowledge a note we got from Todd McGrath, who represents the Hewitt's Landing Condominium Association. Um, with a series of questions. And so Todd, I'm gonna to read a couple aloud. We're not able to address all of them tonight because some of them are outside of the project scope, but I know you had requested a, a meeting if possible. And so we will follow up with you and the association um, to have a meeting to discuss all of the facets of your questions further. I know we've met before, but the two that we can, um, we can address with this group, uh, the first one is the objective of better accommodating people with disabilities is laudable. Why can't the existing dock just be extended or perhaps even better, a lift system installed? Wouldn't that be more cost effective? The state significantly improved the ferry dock just a few years ago. How is walking away from that recent public investment justified when other approaches would seem to be feasible and would not subject abutters to increased negative externalities? Is the issue that you simply need more property rights from DCR to extend the existing ferry dock? So Sharon, uh, why don't you go ahead and address that? Absolutely. And thank you very much for, uh, for the concerns. Um, we can't just extend the existing dock because uh, in order to get, uh, to get that gangway to sufficient length, would extend uh, move the existing barge out into the navigational channel, so which is something we are not allowed to do. Um, the existing dock also isn't fully meeting our operational needs since we have to raft vehicles right now. So by rebuilding the dock, we're able to both create the uh, an accessible facility and improve our operational flexibility uh, for for the ferry use. For the lift, unfortunately, it's been our experience that mechanical systems uh, in a marine environment are very difficult to maintain. And we would not want to create a situation where the only accessible route is mechanical. We always wanna have a non-powered, non-mechanical path of egress um, that is accessible. So a lift system uh, hypothetically could supplement the gangway, uh, length and gangway, but we still need to have a gangway that is fully accessible. Okay, and the other question that I wanted to read uh, from Todd, what specific steps will be taken to ensure compliance with any and all environmental regulations and laws as they apply both during and after construction? These would include, but not be limited to air quality, water quality, noise pollution, fuels and chemicals, and seismic concerns. So uh, this project 
due to the marine nature of it, is going through extensive environmental permitting processes. We are working with the Hingham Conservation Commission, DEP, and the Army Corps of Engineers for various environmental permits. All of those environmental permits come with requirements that we need to meet as part of our construction. Those requirements are then addressed in our construction drawings, our construction specifications, and our contract, and all are binding on the contractor that we will eventually hire. Um, so all of those agencies will be able to oversee the restrictions that they have put on the project. Additionally, the MBTA has an environmental department who is very active in our construction projects. We have an environmental uh, designer as part of the consultant team, and the contractor will be required to hire their own environmental engineer. With all of those people providing oversight on the project, we are certain that our contractor will be compliant. And if they fail in any of their compliance, the contractor will be responsible for all penalties and remedi uh, remediation associated with their failures. Okay, so um, again, Todd, thank you so much for sending those in, and we will be reaching out to schedule a meeting with you and the association to follow up on this and the other items. Very much so appreciate your comments. So again, I'd like to uh, encourage people to either use the Q&A function at the bottom if you'd like to type a question, or I invite you to raise a hand and I can unmute you so you can give a verbal comment or question. Um, while we're waiting, we do have one question in the Q&A. It's from Nick Amder, and it says, are there any changes to existing moorings for current boaters? There will be some changes to the existing moorings, but that is something that has not been fully um, worked out. It's part of the environmental uh, permitting process. So we've been working with Hingham Shipyard Marina and the Harbor Master to identify the impacts and um, what we can do to mitigate, to make sure that we minimize what those impacts are. Uh, Katie, you're muted. I'm sorry, uh, that is all I see in the Q&A uh, so far. So I will, um, I will give it another minute for people to either type in a question or raise your hand. Uh, while we're doing that, I did also want to acknowledge on the screen, if you think of something after this meeting and you'd like to reach the project team, you can reach them at HinghamFerryDock at MBTA.com and the project webpage MBTA.com slash HinghamFerryDock uh, is regularly updated. Um, so I see a raised hand, Matt Outland. Uh, can we have him unmuted? All right, Matt, you should be unmuted. Okay, th thanks guys. Uh, my name is Matt Outland with Marina Technologies. Uh, we're interested um, as bidding as a subcontractor for this job. Uh, just curious to know uh, when and where would the uh, like design documents, your engineering drawings and stuff like that, uh, when and where will those be available? Um, we have a publicly available uh, uh, this is the first time I've been going through it. So the website's ex uh, escaping my name, but we all MBTA contracts are advertised publicly. Um, you can find them if you go through the MBTA website. Um, I think I've just been sent the message. It's combys, C-O-M-M-B-U-Y-S. Uh, so the, that's where the main RFPs will be published. If you're looking to be a subcontractor, I would recommend reaching out to people who you think will be uh, bidding as the prime. Uh, this We have been making this project known in uh, the industry, so most of the main marine contractors are aware that this is coming down the pipe and are watching out for the RFP to be posted. Would there be a list of prime bidders somewhere? Not typically. Uh, uh, afterwards, we will make uh, information public, but because we don't know until they've submitted their bids, it's difficult for us to make that information uh, available in advance. Thank you. Okay, um, going over to the Q&A real quick. Um, uh, anonymous uh, 
question was, um, someone arrived late, are the slides available? The slides will be available by the end of day tomorrow. They'll be posted to the webpage. So you will be able to go ahead and, and download these slow, download these slides on, online. Um, and then there are a few questions. I'm, I'm grouping some here, uh, which started with Tony Ryan, just asking about um, ferry service during construction. Um, will it be disrupted? If so, for how long? Our intention is to maintain uh, ferry service throughout this project. We anticipate there may be a weekend where we impact ferry service simply because when we're moving the walkway from the old dock to the new dock, uh, it could be difficult to maintain that connection, but we hope to minimize it to no more than a weekend. Um, so we, we will be uh, maintaining certainly all commuter uh, service and uh, we would try to any interruption on weekends, keep it outside of the prime weekend uh, seasons. Um, so we don't anticipate any changes, any operational changes either during or after this project. So we expect to have the same number of ferries operating throughout uh, the foreseeable future. Okay, um, again, uh, an invitation to raise your hand and ask a verbal question or comment if you would like. We do have a couple more in the Q&A. Patricia Flynn asks, with increased boat docking, docking, what is being done to minimize noise? So there won't be increased boat, boat docking. There will just simply be more places for the boats to dock. Um, if you think of it uh, like, Currently, we almost have tandem parking spaces. Instead, we're reconfiguring to have the same number of parking spaces, but that they each can have a vehicle pull in on their own. So right now, we can have four boats at our dock. It's just not in an accessible way. So it, the new dock will have four berths. Um, so it's the same, same amount of service, so therefore no increase in noise. Okay, and another uh, noise-related question from Ruth Ann Stiles, who lives at the moorings at the shipyard. What are the hours of construction when we might expect noise? Um, for the most part, we anticipate having construction during regular business hours. There is a possibility during that time of year restriction, because it's so short, we may need to have some night work. If that happens, we will make sure that we are reaching out to our neighbors and making them aware ahead of time. And we'll do everything we can to mitigate that. I can say that we have designed vibratory piles rather than ones that get hammered in. So that will help mitigate the noise. We have taken that into consideration with our construction techniques. All right. I. I don't see any other open questions in the Q&A. want to give everybody an opportunity to provide a written comment. Again, if you would like to offer a verbal comment, please raise your hand, or if you're calling in, dial star nine. We'd love to hear from you. Oh, Tony Ryan says, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time, Tony. We appreciate it as well. If there are no additional questions, I think we can wrap for tonight. Again, thank all of you for your time tonight. We're very excited about this project at the Ferry Dock and look forward to coming back to you with more updates as this project moves along. Have a wonderful rest of your evening.